If you like to loot the spawn island, you can open up all the doors in the warm-up, and they'll be open for you when you get there. In this clip, I didn't have time to open up the last set of lower left doors because I joined the lobby when the timer was already at like 50 seconds, but you'll usually have enough time. This saves a lot of time looting since uh, you'll usually take a bit of damage from the circle anyways, and you don't have to wait for the animations for the doors to open, or if the server's lagging, the doors can be delayed opening. You can do things like reload your gun while still looting, eat to dive, and spacebar to rise while you're swimming. You can do it while swimming or standing still in the water, and this is a lot easier than moving your mouse all the way up or down in order to dive or raise. You can start moving when the healing item you're using is at 0.5 seconds left, and the item will still go off. This works whether you're on foot or in a car. This is the most useful when you're taking circle damage, especially late game, since you want to minimize the amount of damage you're taking. I see a lot of people, they'll wait until they see that their health actually regen at the bottom, and then they'll start running. But you can start the running pressing shift and W right when you see it, 0.5 seconds on that little center circle icon. Bait is a great way to trick your enemies into thinking a uh, room is clear, even though it's not. Here I drop a first aid kit, because I heard someone enter the bunker below me. And so I then, I can third person the corner, knowing that he'll come right up to that first aid kit, thinking the room's clear, and I'll peek out right then and kill him. And that's what ends up happening. You can do this same thing if you're in if you're going to go into a building, drop an item in the bottom floor of the building like a first aid kit or a painkiller, then just don't make any noise upstairs and people will think the house is unlooted so there's no one there. And the reverse is true. So if you see a room that has a painkiller or a first aid kit up ahead of it, don't just assume the room is clear, always check corners and still be aware that someone could be there using the same strategy. You can do the same things when you go into those little huts. You can put like a painkiller on or a drink on the bench outside and then go into the hut and people may think it's clear. If an enemy sees you, they will most likely change their movement pattern. They'll do a weird jump or take cover to their right or go prone or do something weird. Here I saw this guy and I probably could have gotten the kill, but I knew he didn't see me because he didn't turn right to go over the hill to get cover, he didn't turn at me to take aim, so I decided to move closer to guarantee the kill. So if an enemy is, you know, taking longer to loot a building than they would normally, or you're wondering why would they take cover there, or that they shouldn't take that long to do this action, then they've probably seen you. If you're shooting at an enemy and they take cover behind an object, keep shooting around that object as they may not know exactly where you are. And if they keep seeing bullets landing at their feet and hearing more shots go off, they may think they have the angle wrong and try to adjust themselves behind the cover more differently, and that may expose their shoulder or something for you to get more shots on them and get the kill. This is really useful if your enemy takes cover behind a tree, since trees are so thin. Especially if you have a silencer as well, as when you have a silencer, it makes it harder for them to determine where the shots are coming from. I highly recommend changing the inventory button off of the tab key, because if you're sprinting with shift and you want to look at your inventory, it'll bring up Steam's shift tab overlay thing. Also, if you're using alt to look around, and then you open up your inventory, it'll, it's going to alt tab you. So I, I just put mine on a thumb mouse button but you can put it on literally any other key. When you're sniping, if you just click and tap your left mouse button, what happens is your character will unscope right away to chamber the next bullet, and it can be difficult to see whether or not your bullet actually hit or how much bullet drop there is. But if you click and hold when you shoot, your character will stay scoped in so that you can see how much the bullet drop is or if you got a hit on your target or not. And so when you're shooting long range, it can be more beneficial to just click and hold instead of just tapping. Let's say this tree is an enemy, and since I have my sniper out, I quickly scope and shoot, and then switch to my secondary to like finish him off. What happens is, the next time I go to shoot my sniper, a bullet isn't chambered. And so when I shoot, I've just missed a free kill on someone, because I didn't have a bullet chambered. You see, every time after I shoot, I need to let this chambering animation complete, so that my next bullet's ready. So when you shoot and switch weapons right away, what happens is it doesn't do that chambering animation. And so when you switch back to your sniper, you have one of two things you can do. The first is just left click to chamber a next bullet, and then you'll hear the sound and you'll see the animation. And then when you go to shoot, you're good. But if you shoot, switch to your secondary and then come back, the other thing you can do is just do a full reload. And then after that full reload, your next bullet will be good. All snipers work this way. The CAR-98, M24, and AWM. Oh, into my inventory, it says not enough space at the bottom. But if I hold control and drag it in, it'll automatically type the maximum amount that it lets me carry. Also, when I reload this ammo, it won't take up any inventory space since it's loaded into the magazine. So I can keep picking up the max amount, reloading, picking up the max amount, reloading, until... 
All vests give a capacity boost of plus 50, so upgrading from a level 1 vest to a level 2 vest, or to a level 3 vest, won't actually increase your storage amount, and you'll have to upgrade bags in order to do so. Let's say an enemy is out here in the open in this field, and you're driving your car by. If you want to take the fight by stopping your car and you get out to fight, if you just get out, you're on the driver's side and you have no cover whatsoever. And so you'll probably lose that fight. What you want to do is when you're stopping your car to get out, quickly press Control 2 or Control 4 to get on the passenger side of the vehicle. And then when you get out, you can use your own car as cover. Sometimes you may not have a choice to just drive by and you have to take the fight. And so you want to always get on the other side of the car for cover. If, say, you're driving evasively and you hit a tree, if you get it on the driver's side right here, you have no cover. So again, Control 2 or Control 4 to get on that side of the car. You can use your car as cover when fighting. If you accelerate your car from a stopped position, what you'll see here is that after 6 seconds, I reach a speed of 72 kilometers an hour. And there's a way to go faster though, if you hold down Shift, W, and Space all at the same time to spin the wheels a bit, and then when you let go of Space, since Space is the brake, you're actually going to go faster. So you can see here after 6 seconds, instead of going 72, I'm going 90 kilometers an hour. So this is useful if you're waiting for an item to go off, because you can still press Shift, W, and Space, let go of space when you're ready to go, and this is a faster way to get going. The one thing about this though is it will use gas when you're just holding all three of these buttons down. You actually don't need to use Shift, it's faster if you use Shift, obviously. This could also be useful if you're waiting for teammates to get in your car and you're all being shot at. If you look on your map, each one of these white lines to white lines is 100 meters, which means diagonally is about 140 meters. And so yellow line to yellow line is a thousand meters, or one kilometer. This is useful if you're zeroing your shots, as you can quickly tell the distance between you and an enemy. The M249 has a bunch of recoil if you shoot it standing up, but if you go prone with it, there's pretty much no recoil at all. The M249 also completely shreds cars and blows them up in like 40 bullets. If you just look in your inventory to see how many grenades you have, it might trick you because it looks like I only have one grenade here in my inventory, but the grenade in the bottom right spot as well is also a grenade. So you can see I actually have two grenades when I press my number 5 key. In this clip, when I'm looking in my inventory, it looks like I only have a stun grenade, but I also ha I have the frag grenade in my number 5 slot already, so I actually have that as well. Sometimes it's tough to see a crate when you're in third person, especially if there's something blocking the way, so going into first person can help you see the crate easier. If you're prone in the grass or hiding in a bush, use Alt to look around, as it won't turn your whole player model. You can see here I'm using Alt to look around, it doesn't turn my whole player model. But when I'm just looking around using my mouse, it turns my whole model, making me much more visible to other players. So yeah, use Alt when you're looking around. You can throw grenades into these little huts through the windows. It's a bit of a tough throw, but really useful. If you just loot a level 3 bag anywhere from the map, it'll be this digital pixelated camouflage type of level 3 backpack. But if you get your level 3 backpack from a crate, it'll be a different camouflage. It'll be more like a leafy color. Uh, not really sure if this is too useful, but it's just kind of cool to know. You can't find these leafy camo level 3 bags anywhere on the map, except from crates. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you learned some things. And be sure to like and subscribe for some more PUBG content. Thanks, guys.